What happens when two apex predators are in the same area? Well, we're going to talk about that today because we are going to talk about how two orcas, two orca individuals, have affected the great white shark population in South Africa. That's what we're going to talk about in today's episode of Ocean Talk. Let's start the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Ocean Talk. I'm your host, Andrew Lewin. This is the podcast where I talk all things ocean so that you can be made more aware of what's happening in the ocean so that you can live for a better ocean by taking action. And today we're going to be talking about apex predators. And what's an apex predator? Essentially, it's a predator that is the top of the food chain. It actually regulates all the other prey or the food web, essentially, in a specific habitat. But we're going to talk about two specific ones. We're going to talk about the great white shark in South Africa, and we're talking about orcas. Orcas are are probably the apex predator. Now we have seen videos and we have seen images of orcas taking out great whites, orcas taking out six gill sharks or seven gill sharks, orcas taking out other different types of sharks and they go for their livers. It's a little bit of a delicacy, I guess, for them. They like the livers. There's probably a lot of energy within that. And normally they're eating animals like seals. They're eating animals that have high fat. Like sometimes, you know, orcas will eat other marine mammals. And so they will eat like other whales. They will, but they eat interesting parts of those whales. For instance, orcas have been known to eat blue whale tongues in interesting fashion. They've also been known to eat the brains of specific animals. It's really interesting in the way that they choose and also the way how they can access specific parts of the body of different marine animals. For instance, when they attack a great white, they essentially just take the liver and it's precise. Now think about this. This is a, you know, 25 to 30 foot to 50 foot animal, right? It's a massive dolphin, essentially. It's a dolphin. It's a type of dolphin and it doesn't have hands. So how does it rip open from the pectoral fin? It rips open the side and just takes the liver and leaves the animal just dead and it's gone and it's just intact otherwise. It doesn't eat the rest because the liver is where it goes. And today we're gonna to be talking about something. I posted a video on another channel for another podcast that I have, Beyond Jaws Podcast. And if I'll put the link to that video. Uh, Dr. David Ebert, my co-host and I, we interviewed Allison Towner. Now Allison is doing her PhD on great white sharks in South Africa. She lives in South Africa. She's originally from the from the UK. I'll put the links to the actual audio podcast where we talk all about her life once that's up. It's not up yet, but I wanted to post this video on our other channel because it was so important. It was so interesting because orcas in this area have been unreal. Let's start with Allison. Allison is a biologist and she went to study her PhD on great white sharks dynamics in South Africa. Now, you know of this. You've seen them on Shark Week. You know these great white sharks. They're massive four or five meter sharks, you know, up to 20 feet. They are, they're 10 feet wide sometimes. They are massive animals that can jump out of the water. Air Jaws on Shark Week has been a program that's been going on for about 35 years and people are watching it. It's been sort of iconic in terms of documentaries for sharks and people have been photographing it, people have been videoing it and they've been trying to get the right shots and everything like that. It's been pretty much an epic discovery in the shark world, the shark science world and just the world in general of getting these massive animals Animals, you know, these, these thousand pound animals to jump out of the water and just be like, wow, going after a seal or going after something. It's pretty epic to, to watch and it's pretty epic to see. Now, these are apex predators and they're, they were very highly populated in these areas, in these bays along South Africa, along the South African coast. And so all of a sudden, you know, there was this booming, there's this boom of shark water cage diving for great white sharks. And that has been huge in that area. People travel from all over the world to see these great white sharks. And each of those dive outfitters have scientists who study those sharks and they each have permits within their own areas that they can study these great white sharks. So they can chum the, they have permits to chum the water, you know, have scientists on board to study these animals, to document who's there, where they're, where they're at, what their characteristics are like. It's pretty interesting to see some of the science that has come out from these studies. But then in 2017, as Allison's getting ready to do her PhD, she starts to realize something. Great white sharks are popping up dead, like on the shores, eviscerated in the inside, like just no liver. Everything else is intact, but no liver. It's just opened up and they're on, on the shore and there's a few on the shore, but also a lot of them are disappearing. So where are they going? What's happening to these sharks? Are like, are they all dying? Who's doing this? Is it at first, I remember the news coming and I covered it on the How to Protect the Ocean podcast, but they, we thought that it was people. We thought it, maybe it was poachers going after their liver for maybe it was a delicacy that they would send off to some faraway country that they enjoyed the liver of a great white shark because it's a great white shark. And we've seen humans do that before with other, other sharks and other species of having a delicacy for that. 
but that wasn't the case. It was actually orcas, not just a pod of orcas, two specific orcas. They've named them port and starboard based on which way their dorsal fin was leaning. And there's images that I'll put up in this video where you can see port and starboard kind of hanging out. They must come from a pod out in the middle of the ocean offshore. People don't really know that much about that pod, but they come into the bay every once in a while. When they come in, they just decimate whatever great white shark is available to them, which is insane to even think about, right? Think about they come in and normally what we see for great white shark hunting by orcas is they have two animals one will hold the, like one will actually grab the shark the other one will take out the liver like rip it open and take out the liver and then they reverse so that the other one can get the liver of another shark but there have been some occasions where we've seen both of them attack great white sharks but there's other occasions where we see just one either port or starboard grab a shark bring it down to the underwater and within two minutes the shark pops up without a liver and it's gone now just imagine that you have a four to five meter shark being taken out by a larger apex predator the orca coming in at high speeds grabbing it shocking it ripping open the the other one ripping open or even itself ripping open body from the pectoral fin down and grabbing the liver within two minutes it's gone there's also been cases where that have been reported where port and starboard come into a bay and then just kill upwards of 10 to 17 sharks in hours and then just leave again so every once in a while they'll come back for their food and then they go off again and nobody really knows and have studied where they go off and it's really changed the dynamic of that system. We've seen less great white sharks in some of those bays. We've seen more seven gill sharks come up because great white sharks were hunting seven gill sharks. So we've seen that whole system change in dynamics in the ecosystem and food web dynamics. Now there have been reports that some of these sharks, the larger sharks that were spotted in these bays like Mossel Bay and so forth, have actually gone up to Mozambique. And there've been about three that adult size animals that have been tagged and have been found up in that area. But we don't know for sure. It's not, you know, that's not enough to say that the entire population has moved. Allison has talked about how there have been some animals like five meter sharks that have actually stayed hidden and out of the orca's way. And they've been kind of in that very elusive to not only the orcas, but also to people. They've only seen them a little bit at a time, but we don't know if they stay in that bay or if they're just hiding out somewhere. We don't know exactly what's happening. So a lot of questions to be had, but this is just goes to show how things change very quickly in the ocean, all depending on whether these predators move in or move out or if they come back every once in a while and how a specific area can change there's a lot of controversy of is it the orcas that are changing this dynamic is it the orcas that are killing off these sharks there's also other trains of thought where there's it's a fisheries related thing so the fact is that the great white sharks food is not there anymore or not as many are there anymore like other smaller sharks or other smaller fish are not there for the great white sharks to eat but Allison thinks it could be a little bit of both, but there's still a lot of questions to be had, a lot of questions to be answered and studied in these bays in South Africa. And I'm sure that's gonna be happening for a long time to come. And I will be covering it to get those answers to bring them to you. But I just thought it was something that you should know. If you want to go over to that video with Allison and listen to her story about her time with these orcas and her time with these great whites, please check it out. There's a link in the description below. And please feel free, like, let me know what you think about these orcas. How do you feel? about orcas killing great white sharks? Do you think it's sort of a, th a thing that's been happening for a long time or just a new sort of delicacy that's been a part of their palate for just the last uh, number of years? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And if you wanna hear more of these stories and keep up to date on ocean conservation news, feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the episodes I drop on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And of course, if you wanna hear more details on ocean conservation, you can head over to my audio podcast called How to Protect the Ocean. All you have to do is just go in the link below, follow or subscribe, whatever your podcast app, your favorite podcast app allows you to do and listen to those episodes and you'll get more and more details on everything related to ocean conservation. Thanks again for joining me on today's episode of Ocean Talk. I'm your host, Angelou, and have a great day. We'll talk to you next time and happy conservation.